one of those concretions down there looks really good and there's not normally concretions over here normally this is all covered in sand you just draw a quick square around it yeah this is the one I'm looking at It's super windy over here, so I hope this audio comes out. But yeah, there, there's something on there. It's the right shape. It's definitely the right shape for a crab. So let's take it back. We'll do a quick prep just to excavate that top part. This is a small piece of bone from that younger layer that sits on top of the Miocene mudstone. This is the Pleistocene layer. It's just a tiny fragment of fossil bone. This is quite strange. I've never seen a windsurfer down here. Or oh, is that a, a kite? Kite border? Here yeah, we're kilometers from the, the nearest axis, so I don't know how they got here. I hope you can see that, but there's some legs, some very faint legs sticking out there. It's a perfect shape for a crab and I saw the legs on the other side too, but this is a really, really good one. What a good little crab. I also found a piece of bone. I also found this piece of worn bone still in a bit of rock. It's just a mystery bone. It's too worn to see what it is, I think. That's a really big flabellum, a uh, solitary coral. And it's actually turned to iron pyrite, fool's gold, which I haven't seen before. That's pretty cool. It's a beautiful crab down there. Just the carapace, so it's missing the legs. But yeah, that's beautiful. Look at that. The markings on there. Tumidocarcinus giganteus, but a small giganteus. That's really cool. I'll go put it in my fossil area at the workshop for someone to dig up. There's a nice big concretion over there. Give it a few more tides and it'll be out of the cliff. That's about probably a foot in diameter, 30 centimeters, maybe a little bit more. That's staying there today. <laughs> I'm not carrying that all the way back. Right next to it, another one. <laughs> I think we're looking at a very sh large shark vertebra over here. It's got that look to it. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm gonna say that's a shock fitter, but it's very damaged. It's only like a, a fraction of it left. That's pretty cool. I think I see a piece of bone over there in the younger layer. This is the, I think it's the Pleistocene layer. That sits on top of the Miocene layer. So probably only a couple of hundred thousand years old. You can see that one on the right, that one. It's got that honeycombing visible. I'm actually not too sure what that is. It might be from a cow. <laughs> uh, there are cow bones in these cliffs. There's a farm up top there that they fall down from. Or it might be something better. Some larger animal, maybe like an ad's bill or even a, a small mower. I'll take it back home and we can clean it up. Could be the head of a femur, I suppose, where the, the socket, where the femur goes into the hip socket. I was just having a look at this concretion because it had a, a tusk shell in it. See, there's a tusk shell there. And look over there, there's some crab legs sticking out as well on that side and on the other side. So we've definitely got a nice crab in here, which is strange. Normally you don't find them when there's a tusk shell or a flabellum in there, but yeah, that's definitely a little fossil crab in there. Well, here are the three maybes I brought back from the beach. I'm just going to prep a little hole in the top of each, see if we encounter something. Some of them will be empty, but maybe there'll be a crab or something better inside of some of them. These concretions form from the inside out, so usually the fossil is going to be in the middle layer and the, the most extreme sides on the top and bottom are going to be empty. So usually there's not going to be anything in these first one or two centimeters. You might be wondering why am I not simply smashing this fossil open on the beach. It would be a lot quicker. Um, it only takes about 10 minutes to prep it and if there is indeed a fossil inside we're not going to damage it. You can smash it open with a hammer but if it's something fragile like a bird skull it's really going to damage it. Possibly beyond repair. I'm using the smaller air scribe over here to drill down a little bit to explore and then once I've gone down a centimeter or so then I'll remove the, the rock again with the larger air scribe down to that level. Well, we were 0 from 3. <laughs> None of these had any significant fossils in them. This one had a few tiny shells in there. So I suspect this one will just have some more shells throughout the matrix. This one actually went all the way through. You can see there's a hole going through because I went through from both sides. 
nothing inside there. And this one I was going to be really sure about, but yeah, nothing inside there either. I would have encountered a crab by now if there was one in there. I do have one other concretion which has definitely got a crab in there and I just want to prep it and go put it in the kids area. So looks like it's got good separation. <laughs> Famous last words though. Uh, let's give it a quick prep here, just remove this and then go bury it in the sandpit for someone to find. I showed this crab a, a while back but this is the crab that's inside this rock over here. This is the one that's been CT scanned and I made this 3D model and printed it and you can see there are some very faint leg rings sticking out there. So this is one of the examples in the workshop. That was a nice quick little prep. It's a metacarcinous crab. It's got some barnacles over here and so that's a little bit damaged over there where the barnacles were or where they still are. Kind of left the sediment there. But yeah, let's go let's go bury it in the fossil area for someone to find. Thanks for watching everyone i hope you enjoyed that video and that hunt and a little bit of prepping uh, at least we know now that not every concretion's got something inside it stay safe i'll see you on the next hunt